So hello and welcome back guys. So today in this video, I'll be talking about a really small topic. Uh, I'll be talking about the nasolacrimal duct system and apparatus. So though it's small, it's really important. Uh, if they can, they can ask a question, a short note for the nasolacrimal duct apparatus uh, for ophthalmic residents and ENG residents as well. Also really important for those who are in the MBBS uh, years. So. Um, so I'll be talking about brief anatomy of the nasolacrimal duct system uh, apparatus. So how it, uh, how it starts, how it originates, and how it ends up in the nasal passage. So to start with, uh, first of all, we need to know about something about the lacrimal gland. So as you can see over here, the, the picture here shows the area of the lacrimal gland. Uh, this lacrimal gland has got two parts, okay? So the upper one, as you can see over here, is called as the orbital part, and the lower one is called as the palpebral part. So the upper part is like really huge, um, and it's it lies in the orbit, so it's called as the orbital part, simple. And this lies in the palpebral region, that's the eyelid region, so that's why it's called as the palpebral part. So it's actually very small. And the size of this palpebral part is actually one third of the orbital part. So what does this do is that it's a serous acinous gland. So it secretes a lot of serous and acinous uh, fluids, uh, which can, you know, uh, coat over the eyeball, keeps it lubricated. And then eventually all that uh, liquid uh, reaches a punctum here, right here. So that these puncti, uh, when there's a negative pressure, uh, the blinking effect of the eyeball, uh, creates a negative pressure in the nasolacrimal apparatus and it sucks all the uh, fluid over here inside so that this cycle keeps on going and then eventually the liquid from here that's the fluid from here eventually ends up in the nasal passage right here at the end of it so how it happens i'll tell you in short but before that i'll talk about the anatomy so real quick i'll start about the anatomy so the first thing is that we have the uh, nasolacrimal duct system over here. But before that, I'll show you the textbook uh, diagram, which we normally read in our residency area. So as you can see over here, this is a photograph from a textbook, a standard textbook of ophthalmology. So what you can see over here, that's the lacrimal gland. A lot of ducts which come out from the lacrimal gland eventually and drain all the liquid over here or the eyeball and then this eventually drains at the medial canthal area at the lacrimal puncture. So that's the medial canthus, if I can zoom this for you guys. Uh, you can see that's the medial canthus, uh, that's the uh, upper canaliculi and the lower canaliculi, which eventually forms a common canaliculi and opens up in the lacrimal sac region. The lacrimal sac eventually continues uh, as a nasolacrimal duct, it becomes narrower and then opens up into the uh, inferior meatus. So this is a basic rough anatomy which we always go about. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the labeling for you. So superior lacrimal, uh, inferior lacrimal canaliculus, the lacrimal sac, the frontal process of maxilla, the NLD, and the inferior turbinate along with the inferior meatus. And this side you can see that's the medial canalic, that's the medial canthus, and that's the medial palpebral ligament right there and that's the lacrimal gland along with its ducts. So this is what a rough figure we see in the textbook. So if we see uh, some another figure over here, we can see something like this. So the same figure, if I zoom in, uh, we can see something like that. So that's the lacrimal uh, puncti, upper and lower. Now, to start with, uh, this is the first anatomical part. So after that, you get the canaliculi. So the canaliculi is further divided into two parts, the vertical part, which is around two millimeters in length, and the horizontal part, which is around eight mm in length. So that's two mm and eight mm together of 10 mm for a canaliculi. So a vertical part and a horizontal part. So in 90% of population, okay, uh, listen carefully, in 90% of population, nine zero, uh, we see that the upper and the lower canaliculi form a common canaliculi and that opens up in the lateral wall of the, the lacrimal sac. But in case of 10% population, this does not happen. So individually, the upper and the lower one will open up separately uh, in the nasal, uh, in the lateral wall of the lacrimal sac. So that is how it is. So once it opens up in the uh, lacrimal sac, 
This is the lacrimal sac as you can see over here. That's the fundus or the head of the lacrimal sac, uh, which is kind of at a level higher to the inferior uh, tarsal ligament, okay? So there's an inferior tarsal ligament somewhere. So, so at this level somewhere around, there's the inner tarsal ligament, not the inferior, but the inner, the inner tarsal ligament and this head, or you can say the, uh, the fundus of the uh, lacrimal sac extends vertically beyond that inner tarsal ligament. So this is some point, th these are some points uh, that you normally don't read about the anatomy. So I'll clarify about those points right here. So that's about the fundus of the uh, lacrimal sac. And um, the length of the lacrimal sac is roughly around 12 to 15 mm. As you can see, it's 10 mm over here, but in the textbooks, they sometimes give it is around 12 to 15 mm in length, and it is about 8 mm in width. So that's about the anatomy of the lacrimal sac, and then it continues as the nasal lacrimal duct. So the nasal lacrimal duct is normally around 12 mm in length, so you have to remember. Now, the most important point over here is that um, the question may come in viva as what is the direction of the nasal lacrimal duct? So uh, there are two things here, okay? So this is a nasal lacrimal duct region right here, and that's the region of the lacrimal sac. So the first question is the direction of the nasal lacrimal duct. Now, the nasal lacrimal duct, as you can see over here, this is a right side. I'll show you about, I'll show you this direction on the 3D model as well, but I'll just clarify this on this image as well. So as you can see, this is a nasal lacrimal duct, which is coming from the medial to the lateral aspect, and then again, turning over uh, inferiorly, uh, medially. So the answer to that question should be around that it passes downwards. So it's passing downwards, right? It's passing downwards, it passes backwards, and it passes initially laterally, and towards the end of the nasal lacrimal duct, when it opens up into the inferior meatus, it turns medially. So the answer should be downwards, backwards, and initially laterally, and then medially, okay? So moving on to the 3D anatomy model right here. So as we saw, that's the, uh, if I can zoom this even further. So as we saw some time back, this was the uh, nasal uh, lacrimal puncti. This was the vertical, this was the horizontal part. That's the common canaliculi. Uh, if I can show you this, that's the uh, lacrimal sac. That's the fundus of the lacrimal sac. And um, so as you keep on going below, you can start seeing the uh, lacrimal sac area. Then further, it continues to narrow down. And eventually, it turns medially and opens up in the uh, inferior meatus. So you should know about the uh, pathway and the anatomy of the nasal lacrimal duct. So this is sometimes a really important question for your viva exams. So one more important thing about the uh, nasal lacrimal duct is that the nasal lacrimal duct has got a lot of different valves. Now, I'll show you a photograph for that valves. So as you can see on the screen right now, there are numerous various different valves that guide the flow of the liquid from the, uh, the lateral to medial direction. So as you can see over here, this is the uh, right side eye. Uh, that's the upper canaliculus and the lower one. So at the very beginning, uh, at the level of the uh, upper and the lower puncti, you can see a valve called as the valve of Bogdalek. So that is a valve which controls the entry of the tears, as you can see over here from the globe, into the lacrimal apparatus system. And as you can see over here at this area, uh, when you reach the uh, transition between the vertical and the horizontal part of the, uh, the canaliculus, you can see a valve of folds. This valve uh, controls the movement from the vertical to the horizontal transition of the canalicula. So the most important valve which we all know about is the valve of uh, the Rosenmuller. The valve of Rosenmuller is actually the valve at a superior level at the region where the common canaliculus opens up into the lacrimal sac. So there are two very important valves we should remember about is the valve of Rosenmuller, which I just showed you, and the valve of Hasner, which is at the most inferior aspect right here. So the valve of Rosenmuller is above at the superior level, the point which 
uh, where the common canaliculi opens up into the lacrimal sac. Next, we're going to find at the medial valve is the valve of medial palpebral ligament. So this is the area where there is a valve of the medial palpebral ligament. At the inferior aspect of the opening of the uh, common canalicular ligament, common canaliculus into the uh, lacrimal sac is the valve of Hushke. So you're going to remember the valve of Rosenmuller is above and the valve of Hushke is below. So the next one we move is the valve of Beirut or the valve of Krauss. So these valves are a lot to remember. So these, these come, uh, sometimes the viva question may go on these valves. And if the examiner wants to, he may ask a question about these valves if possible. So at least uh, if you want, uh, I understand that it's, it's not important uh, for theory exams, but for viva it is really important. And if you cannot buy hard that, but at least you can remember the names and the levels of which you can remember. So it becomes very easy for you guys to remember that in the exam. So we have the valve of Beirut or the valve of Krauss over here. And directly beneath, we have the valve of Talifer. Okay. So, and the one which is really important is the valve of Hasner. So there's one more viva question, which I actually had got in my residency exam is that uh, he had asked me that what is the other name of valve of Hasner? So I had no idea, but then I checked it up. Uh, then I saw this and then I was like, okay, so this is valve of Hasner it is also called as the valve of Crivelier or the valve of Bianchi. So there are three names for this valve. So valve of Hasner, Crivelier and Bianchi. Okay. So that is a Viva question for you guys. So I hope you remember all these names for your Viva questions. And um, let, let's see what happens if you, um, if you, if you find it difficult to remember, at least just remember the names of a few important valves, and that would be around valve of Rosenmuller, which is here, the valve of Hasner, and the three other names of it. And the third most important valve, which you should remember, is the valve of Hushke, which is directly beneath the valve of Rosenmuller. So at least these three valves are really important for the mechanism. Okay, so I hope you understood the basic anatomy of the, uh, the, lacry the nasal lacrimal apparatus. So basically the nasal lacrimal sac, the lacrimal sac is completely fibroelastic and is covered with uh, fibroelastic tissue, the, the lacrimal fascia. So the lacrimal fascia mainly covers the area of the roof and the lateral wall. So this same lacrimal fascia medially um, separates the lacrimal sac from the median palpebral ligament anteriorly. And as we go posteriorly, the same lacrimal fascia will separate the lacrimal sac from the uh, orbicularis oculi muscle. Okay, also the lacrimal sac over here, as you can see, is also covered by the fibers of the orbicularis oculi muscle. So it has got a lot of protection and a lot of strength. So whenever you're operating externally or internally endonasally endoscopically so you need to remove all those fibers to access the uh, lumen of the nasal lacrimal system the nasal lacrimal sac in case of uh, dcr surgeries so <clears throat> i hope uh, that's the basic anatomy of the nasal lacrimal duct system uh, so eventually it opens up into the as you can see over here um, that's the nasal septum that's the inferior turbinate bone and that's the gap called as the inferior meatus. So around 1 to 1.5 centimeters posterior to the anterior end of the inferior turbinate at the floor or the roof. At the roof of the inferior meatus, not the floor, but the roof of the inferior meatus, 1.5 centimeters behind, it is going to open up. And you can actually see that uh, during the surgery, the, the valve movement. You can actually see the valve of Hasner uh, you can actually see the valve of Hasner as well intraoperatively if you expose the inferior meatus. So I have actually done that in my previous surgery video. So I'll put the link of that video. You can go check it out how you can check the uh, inferior meatus nasolacrimal duct opening. So I think, I think that's all about the anatomy of the uh, nasolacrimal duct system and the apparatus and how it is connected to the eyeball and the, nasal, uh, and the lacrimal gland up here. Okay, so the one last thing about the nasal lacrimal apparatus is that, uh, and the blinking response is that uh, this 
the nasolacrimal system is supplied by the uh, nerve of pterygoid canal. That's the vidian nerve, right? So the vidian nerve, everyone knows how it forms, how it's formed. Actually, in my last video as well, I've told you about the union of the uh, deep petrosal and the greater superficial petrosal nerve. So the blink reflex, the afferent nerve supply is coming from the uh, trigeminal nerve and the efferent uh, supply is from the facial nerve. The facial nerve gives off the branch called as a greater superior, the greater superficial petrosal nerve, the GSPN, at the uh, geniculate, at the, at the uh, geniculate, okay? So that is how it is formed. That's the efferent and the efferent, afferent and efferent of the uh, nasolacrimal duct system. So I hope I've cleared the anatomy in basic. Uh, if at all you have any doubt regarding the anatomy or whatever part you did not understand, uh, feel free in the comment section below and I'll try to uh, clear all your doubts. Till then, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Thank you.